just honoring God. Uh, we hope that those of you that can't be here with us at home, take the moments beforehand just to get with the Lord. Um, that's what we do with our time of praise and worship. And uh, the Spirit fell down upon us this morning. And He reminded us just how wonderful it is to gather together as the family of God in His presence. It just lets us know that He's got something in store for us today. That He is ready to meet us. He set this day aside long before this world was created. Because He set aside the Shabbat for a day for us to be with us. And He set aside this particular day for you and I to be with Him. Isn't that marvelous? That, that's just glorious. And if He wants to meet with us that bad, and that means He must really love us. So when the world looks out and they say, uh, there is no God. When the world tries to tell us, oh, it's not that important if there is a God. I hope if you don't know for certain today, before you leave today, before this um, recording is over with, I hope you know how much God loves you and desires to be with you. So that when anyone looks at you, and when anyone tries to doubt or despairing you because of your belief in God, they will be like Balaam. And they'll only be able to bless God. Some of you already know that was the lead-in to the Mato Vu. Because that's exactly what happened. And I don't know how those Israelites felt that day in that valley. But I have to believe when the power of God through that blessing was released, they felt it. So my prayer for you today is that you feel it when someone looks at you and they wind up having to bless your God because they see Him in you. Won't you join us in the Matavu? Oh, I forgot the counting of the Omar. Man, I'm so excited. We're already with God. I forgot we are in that process of counting up to when God meets on the mountain. Wow. I'm already there. I'm, I'm ready for it, aren't you? And we still got 15 more days to go. Oh, man, if we're getting this excited already. <laughs> man, look out for this Shava Oats. I have a feeling those of us that are going to be standing up on that mountain in Haiti, y'all are going to hear us shouting and we're going to hear y'all shouting. And everywhere in between is going to be going, what in the world? Is God coming now? And hopefully, wouldn't that be nice? So let's start off and let's say that blessing for the privilege of counting up and preparing ourselves and the rest of the world for an encounter with God. Asher Kitshanu Bamitzvo Ta Vitsivanu Al Seferat Haomer Amen. Are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandment and commanded us to count the Omar? Amen. Today's the 35th day, five weeks of counting the Omar. Ooh, now the Matavu. Oh, Man, I want to get to the Matavu so bad today. I've already told y'all, I've prayed that y'all would feel the power of God in the Matavu. And I'm wanting to get there for it. But there's so much to praise God for. And He provides everything for us. And you know, I know this uh, psalm that we say during the blessing of the Omar it specifically kind of leans towards that agricultural. But it leans further than that because my Messiah said, look at the fields. They're white unto harvest. And part of the counting of the Omar is the reminder of us that do believe. 
He is coming and we need to be harvesting now. We plant, we water, He brings about the increase, but then He allows us to harvest. So you got 15 more days, two weeks, to go out and share with others so that they can experience that outpouring. I hope that's what you've been doing, and if not, I hope you're challenged today to start doing that. So that every time you say this psalm, you don't think about just that agricultural. You think of that spiritual harvest. Won't you say it with me? May the people praise you, O God. May all the people praise you. The Lord has produced His harvest. God, our God, has blessed us. God has blessed us. May all people everywhere honor Him. Matuvu holeka Yaakov, Mishkanoteka Yisrael, Vahani barov chastecha, Avo vetecha, Eshtaka veel hekol el hekol kachecha, Bayiratecha. Adonai hafti meon betecha, Umakom mishkan kevodecha. Vahani eshtaka ve. Vehekra Evrecha Evrecha Leaf ne Adonai O sea Vanita Falati Lacha Adonai Eight Raton Elohim Barochastecha how lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel. O Lord, through your abundant kindness I will enter your house. In awe I will bow down toward your holy sanctuary. O Lord, I love the house where you dwell and the place where your glory resides. I shall prostrate myself and bow, bend the knee before the Lord, my Maker. As for me, may my prayers to you, O Lord, be at the right time. O God, in your abundant righteousness, answer me with the truth of your salvation. Amen. Won't you rise? As we go to the Shema, my prayer for you with the Matavu is that you would feel that spirit flowing through you. The prayer for the Shema is our prayer for one another that the Lord resides with you. And as we pray that prayer, we're praying that God is with you in every moment of the day when you lie down and when you rise up. We're praying that He's with you in every conversation that you have, everywhere you go. And that is something that adorns your dwelling place. Something that is the statement of the protection that is around your dwelling. Because see, when the Spirit of the Lord is with you, there is no power that can come against you. No weapon formed against you shall prevail. So when we pray the Shema, we are praying in an honor of Adonai. We are giving Him thanks. But we should also be praying it for one another. That they would know that presence. And that that presence would dwell with them. So as you pray today, will you pray for the Spirit of God to be with those around you? 
Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam Vahed Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. Blessed is the name of His glorious kingdom for all eternity. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha, v'kol levavka uv'kol nafshecha uv'kol meodecha. V'hayu hadavarim ha'ele asher anokim atzavcha hayom alavavecha. V'shinan tam levanecha. Vadibar tabam, vashivteka, bavateka. Uvlekteka, vaderek, ushak baka, uv kumeka. Uk shartam le oat al yadeka, bahayu la tota fot bain eneka. Uk taftam al mozazot, beteka, uvish areka. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And have these words which I command you this day be upon your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children. And speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you retire, and when you arise. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hands, and let them be frontless between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and upon your gate. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. And if you love your neighbor as yourself, you want them to know your heavenly Father. You want them to know that salvation. You want it to go to your children's children's children. That's been made even more evident to me this week. You're praying that they know that presence. You're praying for that salvation. And that is a part of the Avot. Won't you say it with us? Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Velohe Avoteinu Elohe Avraham Elohe Yitzchak Velohe ako, Hael Hagadol Hagibor Vahanora El Elyon, Gomel Hasadim Tovim, Vikone Hako, Vizochechas de Avot, Umevi Guel if Nevenehem, Laman Shemo, Beahava. Melek Ozer Umashia Umagain, Barukata Adonai, Magain Abraham. Blessed are you, Lord our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, the Most High God, who bestows grace and creates all, and remembers the righteousness of the Father and brings a Redeemer to their children's children for His name's sake with love. O King, Helper, Savior, and Shield, blessed are You, O Lord, Shield of Abraham. And let's give Him thanks. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
we pause for a moment and we open the ark to remind us that the gates have been opened to us to have access to the Word Himself. And then we pray the prayer because at the moment whenever we realize that the access has been opened for us to come face to face with the Almighty, we don't have to be intimidated. We don't have to be in trembling fear of retribution. Because it's in that moment we are to realize there is none like our God. That's the reason why we immediately go to the Ankamoka. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord. And there is nothing like your works. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And your dominion is throughout all generations. The Lord reigns. The Lord has reigned. The Lord will reign forever and ever. The Lord will give strength unto His people. The Lord will bless His people with peace. Ein kamocha va Elohim Adonai va ein kamasecha malchutcha malchut kol olamim umel shaltcha bekol dor va dor Adonai melech Adonai mahalach. Adonai Himloch Leolam Vaed Adonai Hoz Leamo Yitain Adonai Varech Et Hamova Shalom Av Harakamim Eti va verzon ka et zion. Tivne chomot Yerushalayim. Tivne chomot Yerushalayim. Ki vacha lavad bataknu. Melech el Ramanisa Adon Olamim. Father of mercies, do good in thy will to Zion. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, for in you alone do we trust. O King, God exalted and lifted up, Master of the universe. Amen. I'd like to call Bruce up. He's going to be our tour carrier for today. It is good to have Bruce back with us. He's been ministering to his family during a tough time. And he has carried his word to his family in a very desperate time. So I've asked him if he would do that for us today. As we remember that no matter what, we can follow the Word. Even when we don't feel like it. Even when others try to discourage us. Because it's exactly what we've been praying for. That the Spirit of God would flow out. And that the world would see that. And that the world would be encompassed by it and that we might dwell with His Spirit. And that they, that they that don't know Him yet would accept Him and know that peace because there is none like Him. And whether they want Him to or not, He reigns. And before it comes too late, we need to follow Him now. Because on the judgment day, if we're not following Him then, we'll be eternally separated from Him. 
and according to the story that my Messiah told, if you're separated from Him, you will still be able to see Him. You will still be able to follow Him with your eyes at that point, and that's the torment. Because you will know I had the chance to be with Him, and I chose not to. That's the torment. Won't you follow Him now, not only with your eyes, but with your whole being? When the ark would travel, Moses would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered, and let them that hate you flee from you. For from Zion will go forth the Torah, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Blessed be he who in his holiness gave the Torah to his people Israel. Vayahi ben Soharon, Vayomer Moshe, Kumo Aronai, Via Futso Veka, Via Nusu, Misa Necha, Mi Panecha, Ki Mitzion. We say the blessing for the reading of God's Word. You know, we've been praying and our focus has been on really the Spirit of God just being poured out. And when we say this blessing, and we're giving thanks that God has given us His Word, it's once again a reminder to us, and it is a prayer from us of gratitude that we are able to be in that presence. 
because His Word is alive and is sharper than any two-edged sword. And it can cut down to the quick. That bone and marrow, cut down to the quick. So when we're in that presence, everything else fades away, but what's most important? And what's most important is the Spirit of God. So when we say the blessing for the reading of His Word, it can become rote memory. Just something that we do before we read. But it was designed and it was given for us to make that pause. To make sure our focus is purely upon God. Let us say the prayer together. Baruch et Adonai Hamvarak. Baruch et Adonai Hamvarak Le'olam Va'ed. Baruch et Adonai Hamvarak Le'olam Va'ed. Baruch et Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Asher v'karbanu mikol ha'amim. V'natan lanu et Torato. Baruch ata Adonai, no tain Torah. Amen. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One for all eternity. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord. Thank you. When we were saying it in Hebrew, <laughs> I knew who has chosen us. The God of the universe. We fool ourselves into saying we chose God. We sought God. We pursued God. God. He chose us. He seeks us. He pursues us. And when He finds us, He doesn't chastise us. He gives us gifts. Gifts to equip us. To empower us. To bless others. And I was telling you to instruct you and God was just pouring into me. Pause, because you're about to read my Word. And when you read my Word, it's a gift. And it's a gift so that you can be my blessing to others. It may have been a short part of shot this week. But it was an effective one, at least for me, whether it was for you. I want to call up my friend Marion to read for me today. And I think God knew I was going to need somebody to stand by me that was going to be praying for me as strong as she does. So, our portion for this week is Bahar. On the mountain. It's found in Leviticus chapter 25 through just the second verse of chapter 26. Not many times do we have a parasha that's just basically one chapter. Uh, but because of the leap year, we've got one that's been split and it's just one chapter. And that kind of makes me think whenever I was looking over it. You know, if it's that short, it must be that full. And this is a good one. It is. <laughs> that it is. 
Our half Torah reading is found in Jeremiah 32. Once again, it's a short one. It's just 6 through verse 27. Our Brit Hadashah is a short one. It's just Luke 4, 16 to 21. So as we go through it today, I hope God pours out even more than He did while you read it this week. And I hope some of you even had the opportunity, since it was a short one, to read it more than once this week. We're going to be beginning in Leviticus chapter 25. Miriam's going to read for us verses 1 through 4, first in the Hebrew. Vai the bear at Onai El Moshe Bahar Sene Lamor. The bear El Bene Israel. By a Marta, a lechem, ki tevo, el haretz, a sheer ene noten lechem, ba shabta, haretz, shabbat, la adonai. She a shenim, tis ra sedeka, be she a shenim, tis mor karmeka, be a safta et tevo ata. Uva shena hashavet, shabbat, shabbaton. Yehei la retz Shabbat la Adonai Sadeka lo tizra vachameka lo tizmor. Now in English from the Tree of Life. Then Adonai said to Moses on Mount Sinai, Speak to B'nai Israel and tell them, When you come into the land which I give you, then the land is to keep for Shabbat to Adonai. For six years you may sow your field, and for six years you may prune your vineyard and gather it in its fruits. But in the seventh year, there is to be a Shabbat rest for the land, a Shabbat to Adonai. You are not to sow your field or prune your vineyard. Y'all know I'm already excited and I'm ready to go, but the Lord did tell me we've got to read it all today before I start. (laughs) So, if you will, rise. And let's thank God for the gift that He gave us. Lift Nebene Israel up Adonai beyond Moshe. And this is the Torah that Moses placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord through Moses' hand. Amen. Let us turn over to Jeremiah chapter Chapter 32 now. Miriam is going to read for us verses 21 through 23. You brought your people Israel out of the land of Egypt with signs and wonders, with a strong hand and an outstretched arm, and with a great terror. You gave them this land which you swore to their fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. They came in and possessed it, but they did not obey your voice nor walk in your Torah. They have done nothing of all you commanded them to do. 
Therefore, you caused all this evil to fall on them. We're supposed to read it all first, so turn to Luke chapter 4. Marion is going to read 16. Marion, would you mind just going ahead and reading the whole thing? Um, 16 through 21. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been raised. As was his custom, he went into the synagogue on Shabbat, and he got up to read. When the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, he enrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Ruach Adonai is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed and to proclaim the year of Adonai's favor. He closed the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. All eyes in the synagogue were focused on him. Then he began to tell them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your ears. Amen. On the mountain. You know, we equate being on the mountain with a, a high, a great experience. Here in East Tennessee, we live in the mountain, and we know people travel to come to the mountains just to, to be and to see just the majesty that's before you. And this parasha is entitled, On the Mountain. On the mountain, I want you to look out and I want you to see the majesty. Because from the mountain, you can see far off. You can see the enemies long before they get to you. And you can be prepared. That's the reason why we put our fortresses on the hilltops, the high places. So here we are, and we've read. We read starting with the Shemitah and the Jubilee. Then we went to Jeremiah and we heard about how when it wasn't honored, they were sent into exile. And it was done in a very peculiar way because Jeremiah was told to go redeem a piece of land. Because he was, he was the kinsman redeemer. He had the right. So he was to redeem it, but he was supposed to go before the council at this, the gates and proclaim, this is what God's doing. Then we went into Luke and we hear of Yeshua making Aliyah like Marion did today. Having the Bible put, oh, <laughs> having the word put before you wasn't just the, the printout. God had me actually put the word just like he did with Yeshua. It was put before to read to those present. Here's a connection. Last week's parasha ended with talking about how when someone's done something, the punishment fits the crime. You can't excessively punish. And then it stops from that and it goes and it says, when you've gone into the land, then you are to let the land. So there's a contingency there. It's based on God's people. When God's people is there, even the land around is going to be blessed. Because it's not until God's people is, are placed there does the land get its rest. But when God's people are there, the blessing is supposed to flow out even to the land itself. 
And just like the people get a time just to rest in glory and the majesty of God, every seventh year, the land gets to. But it doesn't stop there. It says the nation itself, all that resides in the land, it starts talking about the the children of Israel, but also those that sojourn and those that, that are foreigners amongst you. And that there comes a time when it's all the Lord's to begin with and we're to recognize that and we're supposed to give it back to the Lord by giving it to the ones He's put in charge of it. And that's the Jubilee. And I'm, I'm seeing a connection here now. Remember, I've been telling y'all for weeks now, God doesn't just lump things together, just random ADHD. Oh yeah, and this. Oh yeah, and this. God's a God of order. Amen. And He starts off, well, He ends up last week with this thing about making sure the punishment matches the crime. And don't let the punishment be more than the crime. And then he starts talking about the land. He could easily say, ah, oh, that means that's the reason of the exile. For 70 years, they didn't, they didn't give 70 years worth of rest. So they were in exile for 70 years. To match up, because that's what God said. You didn't obey, you didn't follow, so therefore the land will get its rest. We can make that connection. But there's something even greater there. Because remember, Jeremiah was told by Adonai, you are the Redeemer. Go and redeem. And then you're to give the deeds to the men that sit at the gate, to the authorities, to the officials, to the leaders. And you're supposed to say to them. You're supposed to say, even though you were given the Spirit of God so that you could be a blessing, you could be a blessing to your family. You could be a blessing to your neighbors. You could be a blessing to the land. You could be a blessing to the nation. You could be a blessing to the world. And you didn't have to figure it out. I gave you instructions on how to do it. And you didn't do it. But the Spirit of God has mercy. And there is a Redeemer. And that Redeemer has purchased back the land. That blessing, that gift that God had given you, the Redeemer has gotten it back. And it will be protected. Now we look at Luke and we hear our Messiah standing up and he's talking about a passage that's related to the year of Jubilee. Because the the year of Jubilee is when that gift, that blessing of freedom is given. When the land is returned and things are put back in the order that He intended it to be in. And I love how it's recorded. In your hearing. Did you catch that? Today, this has been fulfilled. In your hearing. The scroll was rolled back up and put into his protective jar just like the deeds were with Jeremiah. And immediately after that, he says, this has been fulfilled in your hearing. And I once again go back to Jeremiah where he's giving them hope and he's saying, Adonai will redeem. And I'm like, oh, wow. Wow, I have never 
And all the years of reading those passages never had God put them together like that before. Now you understand my prayer for you to feel the Spirit. Now you understand the reason why our prayer for the Shema was that others would be blessed in the presence of God. God reminded me and showed me that part of the, part of the reason why the Shemitah is where it is, He says, there's a crime and the punishment is going to fit it. But don't lose hope. There's going to be a Redeemer that's going to put it back in order. That's going to provide the shalom that's needed. And even when we mess up, don't worry. It's going to be done because God is going to remind us, no, it's going to be sealed up. And even the leaders can't undo it. Because it has been fulfilled in our hearing. Because the Lord has spoke it. And when the Lord speaks it in your heart and you hear it, it is a done deal. It is sealed. And it's like I overheard somebody saying, talking about just because you're still seeking God and you're like, oh, I messed up. And the evil one comes in and says, oh yeah, yeah, you're not redeemable now. The simple fact that you still know, the simple fact you still know is Him saying, no, I'm still protecting you. I'm still right here. Don't let Him whisper that in your ears. My law is my law. And there will be rest in the land. There will be shalom in the land. And I am protecting. And one day soon, the jubilee will be fully fulfilled. And I will put everything back in order. I told you it was a short one because it was an important one. It was a full one. Because that's the message the world needs so desperately out this, outside of this building. That's the message that a small village in Haiti heard. And we're going to go build them a gathering place so they can proclaim on this mountain. The year of Jubilee is coming. And God will put all things right. And in East Tennessee, God put this place to proclaim from on this mountain salvation has come. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So when we pause to read God's Word... Remember, it is a gift. So that even the land and the people and the nation around you will be blessed. Don't keep it to yourself. Let it go. And you'll find out it was a much bigger blessing than you ever dreamed it was. Now we pause after reading His Word, after He shows us and He enlightens us with His Word. We give thanks again. I'm giving thanks again because I know you've entrusted that to me to take out to the nations now. Strengthen me because I know your Word is blessed and it is meant to go forth. Let us give thanks. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam 
Asher natan lanu Torah demet v'chaye olam nata bituchenu Baruch atah Adonai noten ha Torah Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us a Torah of truth and has planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Keep it there for one moment, if you will. I want to firmly plant this parasha into you because you just said, plant. The Shemitah and the Jubilee are thought to be agrarian, agricultural. And every time you read the Word of God, you're giving Him thanks that He's planted it, that it may grow. And when it grows, it produces fruit that others may be nourished. If you've never noticed that part of the prayer, you have now. All right, let us rise. Et kahim hi la machazikim ba vetomacheha meushar derakeha darke noam vekol nativoteha shalom. Shive nu Adonai Elecha Vanashuva Chadesh Chadesh Yamenu Chadesh Yamenu Keke It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it, and those who support it are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Bring us back, Lord, to you, and we shall come. Renew our days as of old. Amen and amen. You may be seated. 